Hi, welcome to the L Rush Show, where I deliver content intended to inspire, educate, and motivate. Engage with me online at lrush.com and on social media. Enjoy the show. Today, my guest is Abby Rosenblum. She is the founder and head matchmaker of The Social modern matchmaking. With the goal of spreading more love into the world, Abby connects singles through blind dates and events in a more authentic and intentional way. She also hosts The Ghosted Podcast, a resource for singles internationally who are looking to up their dating game or just share some dating ghost stories. Visit www.thesocialmm.club to learn more. Hey, Abby, welcome. How are you? I am doing great. How are you? Good. You know, your profession is like, so we're, we're, everyone's fascinated by it. You know, it's such an interesting thing. Tell us how you got into the world of matchmaking. Yeah. You know, it uh, was a little bit intentional and a little bit on accident all at the same time. Um, you know, I was dating a lot on every dating app, probably going on three to four dates a week, um, like five years ago. And just wondering why things had to be so hard and so time consuming. Um, You know, I did eventually meet my husband through that saga of online dating. But after that, I thought, why don't I try to help other people and do something different? And matchmaking, you know, is not a new concept. Um, You know, it's been around forever, but, uh, you know, not a lot of people are taking more of a modern approach to it. So, you know, I kind of started setting up friends, taking notes on what they wanted, what they were looking for and, you know, the big deal breakers and then put up a website and here we are. This is now, you know, my whole life doing this thing. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Okay. So there's so many ways that matchmakers can work with people, right? Everyone's different, right? Some have like, Hey, here's a free database. Some have, this is only paid or free for women. I mean, anyone can just Google matchmakers and look up and you see that there's a variety of ways and you do a few unique things, which we'll, we'll talk about later, but for starters, what's one of, what are some themes that you see and that you felt for yourself when you were going through that process? I mean, ultimately you did meet your guy, but what was it that you're like, you know what? I think I can shore this up and make it quicker for others. Like what were those themes and things that you noticed? Yeah, it was really just, you know, all the BS that you have to deal with through dating through dating apps. Cause you know, you have to filter through people and make sure that, you know, are they really looking for what I'm looking for? And you might get, you know, into a two month long relationship and then you finally realize, oh crap, they don't want kids. And that's what I want. Um, you know, and it's hard to have those, you know, more in-depth conversations up front. So, you know, I think that was really one of the big things is, you know, a lot of people have time to filter through that on their own. Um, but also your person that you might want to meet might not even be on a dating app and, you know, going to a bar, isn't really, uh, the place to meet people anymore. You know, a while ago, you know, my parents, maybe, you know, that would have been something more so that they would have met that way. Um, but yeah, just filtering through people and actually finding people that want what you want, um, is really the biggest obstacle. And then getting someone to actually meet in person is even a larger obstacle. You could get stuck texting for, for years, (laughs) which is like absolute no, no, right. Get to the phone call, get to a conversation, meet right right away. Um, at least get, get a sense of the person, the texting, at least hear someone's voice. Um, yeah, there's been a couple of times where, I mean, look, it, it's just a thing sometimes. Right. But, but I remember one time had some texting with someone and it was like, great, let's move to phone conversation. Glad I did. But like the moment I heard their voice, I just, I feel bad. They're a nice person, but I just going to say that it was like the worst voice. <laughs> like I, I was like, oh my God, I, I'm so glad I didn't waste driving to meet someone. Like I couldn't even handle almost conversation. They had a really tough, uh, tough sound. It was like almost um, a character out of a, you know, animated <laughs> show or something. It was oh really my tough. God. But it was something like, oh, well, you know what? But again, like we're, we're sensitive to like voice, sound, you know, the demeanor, how someone presents themselves. A conversation is not text. Um, What are some of your favorite stories of people who, you know, there's so many people out there who feel like, oh, you know, won't work for me. I've tried everything, (laughs) which I'm sure you felt for a while. Right. Yeah. I mean, you know, I get all kinds of people who come to me with different goals and different things they want to accomplish by matchmaking. But, you know, usually it's, you know, meeting someone and having a monogamous relationship, Um, I had a woman who came to me 
uh, it was like kind of towards the end of 2020, you know, she's like, Oh my God, I've been inside for months and months. And I just want to put myself out there. And, you know, I started setting her up on dates and she hadn't been married before, had no kids, was in her late thirties. And, you know, then she just got too worried with COVID. So we had to pause everything. Virtual dates weren't really working out. So we're like, okay, let's wait, you know, until the summer and I'll start sending you up again. Um, so summer came around, we met up for coffee, you know, she was ready to date and put herself out there. Um, I set her up on one date, which was, you know, it was okay. They had a good time, but there was no sort of romantic connection. Um, and then I set her up on another date with this guy that had uh, come to me from one of my friends who is a dating coach. And uh, it was just everything lined up. You know, they had all these things in common. They went, they had a great date. It wasn't any sparks or love at first sight, um, but they have been together ever since. And um, when we started working together, she had said, you know, I really want someone to bring to this wedding I'm going to in Turks and Caicos in the summer 2021. And we did it. We made it happen. <laughs> you got it. Yeah. So let's, yeah. Uh, I want you to mention some of the, I'll mention a few that I've, uh, let's talk around before people that are out. The reason I wanted you on is because this is a thing. Sometimes people seek out, they don't know how it works. And I have had so many friends who've wasted lots of money in the process right. too. So I do want to talk to you about like what we need to look for, what someone needs to really look for and vet in a matchmaker. Right. And secondly, like, so this has happened to me too. Like there's, you know, at one point someone was like, you should sign up for everything, do all the free, you know, matchmakers that offer a free database for women or something like that. So I was like, okay, I did it. And then <laughs> uh, a couple of times there were some genuine dates, but also there's this thing where it was obvious that they knew it wasn't a match, but they had a tough client and they just wanted to give them and present them a smart, pretty date, which is very disingenuous <laughs> because they knew it uh -huh. wasn't a match. And then you feel like, all right. Like I was in your database, but this is also kind of bullshit because now I'm just your actor essentially. Do you know what I'm saying? And I've, I know that that's happened a couple of times. So I just want to put like the, the, the like warnings out there. And also there's people that have paid and then really regretted it because they just didn't, you know, or the, the matchmaker really didn't listen to them. And so how do you even know if the matchmaker is going to list? Like, you know, if you're really listing like, Hey, these are some serious things and someone keeps bringing you something else, you know, I mean, yeah, you could try to get your money back, but talk about these yucky pitfalls and the negative sides, the stuff I'm kind of, you know, I know I'm sure you've heard way more than I have. So oh boy, yeah, lay it all out. So people can be aware of the pitfalls and things to like, look out for red flags. Right. Yeah. It's, you know, it's kind of interesting because there are, you know, there are so many matchmakers out there, but I don't think nearly enough to serve all the single people. Um, you know, and I obviously get horror stories of people who've worked with matchmakers before and had, you know, just everything that could go wrong, really go wrong. And I'm just like, why didn't you call me to start with, you know? Um, and kind of like what you were saying, there are some companies where the matchmakers are required to hit some kind of quota or they guarantee a certain amount of dates. And maybe they take on clients just because they have to hit some kind of quota in that respect. And then they're taking on people that they may not be able to find candidates for. So then they're calling you up L and they're like, well, she's beautiful and smart. Let's just send her out with Joe Schmo. Um, <laughs> when, you know, maybe you're a match for him, but he's not a match for you. Um, you know, that's kind of where I see some of the disconnect is, you know, obviously you have to have a mutual match for things to work. <laughs> um, you know, unless I don't know, something crazy happens, but you really need to have that. And, you know, what I always tell people with matchmaking is, you know, it's obviously um, an investment because, you know, you're basically hiring someone to search for this person for you and, you know, filter through all the, the BS. So hopefully you don't have to. So, you know, there definitely is a large price tag that comes along with working with a lot of different matchmakers. So I think it's really important. Number one, I always tell people is if you are not a hell yes, or a hundred percent, yes, um, we're not working together. So, you know, I am never in the business of, you know, selling someone on a more expensive yeah. option or, you know, convincing someone that this is what they need to do because it's never going to be fun. If I just convince someone, Hey, give me your money and uh, maybe we'll find you somebody. So, you know, I think what is really important is, you know, find that person that makes you say hell yes. And if you don't, 
don't do it. You know, there are so many ways you can meet people. It doesn't have to be matchmaking in the least. Um, I think what's really important too, is if you are, you know, interviewing different matchmakers, you know, I'm always open to having people talk to past clients and oh, that's a good one give them their past experiences. So you can always ask that matchmaker, like, Hey, you know, I'm still kind of considering it. Like, is there a past client that, you know, I could speak to and kind of hear, you know, what their experience was, uh, because, you know, that's when you'll know really, uh, (laughs) by hearing it firsthand from those people. Um, and then, you know, the other thing too, is there are some good questions you can ask, um, to kind of see like, was this person listening and do they really know what I'm looking for? You could ask, you know, can you give me some examples of, you know, men or women that you might set me up with based on what I told you, or, you know, based on what I told you, what might my ideal partner look like in your eyes or where are you going to go to find this person? So I think those are three really good questions to ask um, because then you can really tell if someone's listening. They're just like, Oh, I'm going to find you someone handsome and six feet tall. Um, they probably weren't really paying attention to the important things. I think those are all important. And also uh, it seems similar as you were like talking about that. I felt the vibe, you know, in my work in the health field where people feel intimidated by Mm -hmm. a doctor or someone, or if there's someone in position to help you with something and we need to remind ourselves that we're our own advocates, right. And you are hiring this person. You're not at their mercy to find love, right? Like clearly there's other options. And so, um, I think that that's what the, how that sort of works. Someone, a couple of people that I know they're older and felt like, okay, I don't want to deal with it. And it was almost like we joked, we joked because when she called and she's like, well, I shouldn't have done it, but I paid this matchmaker $5,000 and this is what happened. And I just wanted to be like, what? It's <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, didn't seem like she did the, the vetting road and mm-hmm. kind of knew better. Um, and so that's why I want to point it out. Don't just blindly give someone your money or some company uh, for this, vet them. Now, what are some things too that you see? I mean, you're talking to men and women of all ages, different types, all sorts of stuff. You, your company even offers an option for LGBTQ. So, I mean, you're, you're dealing with everyone. What are some constant themes you see that either are holding people up from relationships and getting into relationships? I mean, when I was on your show, we talked about confidence and those mm-hmm. sort of things. What are some trip ups or, or ways you'd like to point out that people should maybe think differently about either online dating or matchmaking or just finding love in general? Yeah, I definitely always see that people, a lot of people don't even know what they want uh, is a really big one. (laughs) And that's a pretty key to finding your person. Um, You know, people will come to me and they'll say, well, I just want someone attractive. Uh, Okay, well, what does that mean to you? Because attractive is different to everyone. Um, So, you know, if you're thinking about working with a matchmaker or just entering the dating world, uh, I would definitely offer some advice to think about what it is you want and not just in terms of, you know, hair color, eye color, body type, um, but in terms of what that person is like and also what that ideal relationship is like. Um, Because if you go into dating, knowing what kind of relationship you want, you're going to be able to, you know, really filter out a lot of the people that are not right for you. You know, if you go into dating, you're like, I just want something casual. I want to see multiple people and, you know, I don't want to commit. That's amazing. Know that. And then you're going to attract that in. But, you know, if you want a serious relationship, um, you know, make sure you go into dating with that. Um, you know, it's kind of like anything doing it without intention is going to make things more difficult. Um, and then the other thing I really see is, you know, the biggest determination I think of compatibility is having values line up. It's not interest. It's not height. It's not weight. It's not, you know, whether or not you have 10 dogs. I mean, that may get in the way, Um, but it really is, you know, what do you value in your own life? And I have noticed a lot of people don't know that when they come to me. Um, So that's another important thing to think about. You know, do you value, uh, you know, loyalty? Do you value laughter, community, you know, whatever it might be. Um, And to really think about that, I think those are really big things that are holding people back. And then, of course, I do get a lot of people that are hung up on exes still, um, Mm. you know, and they are just like, I want to be out there. I want to move on, but they're really not ready. Um, So please block your ex on social media. It will help speed up the process. (laughs) Oh, hey, I have like coached so many people to do blocks. Like, listen, the blocks are the best. You got to do the block. And you know, on that order of confidence, the reason you block 
is because you love yourself because to not block is to have a sick curiosity of what this person may or may not. Right. And most likely this is something that's unhealthy usually. And if it's not, okay, maybe a different story. Tell us also, uh, all right, how long have you been married and how's that going? And what sort of thoughts do you have to offer us on that? Yeah. So, um, I have been married for almost six months. Wow. Um, so (laughs) can't say, all right, you know what? Fuck it. I'm not going to ask anything. That. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna Congratulations. Say, I'm not an expert. I would love to get advice maybe from some other married people. <laughs> you now need to go to like a marriage guy. Like, yeah, you got to get like coaches have coaches. Hey, <laughs> right. Hey, none of us know everything. So even the people who've been married for, you know, 50 years, I'm sure they would still say that they're still learning. So tell us about that experience of, you know, you, you said you, you went through this whole process of doing a lot of dates and then you mm-hmm. met this guy. So your current husband, was that an immediate chemistry? Was that something that built, give us all of the thoughts and vibes and things that you felt from when you saw his profile to where you are now. Oh yeah. Great question. So I saw his profile and Uh, you know, it wasn't anything special, but I knew he was attractive and I was like, okay, you know, he's got big arms. That was a quality I was looking for at the time. Um, (laughs) and, uh, he had a puppy in a picture. So, you know, game over from there. Um, you know, we actually didn't follow any rules or advice that I would give anyone today. So, um, I (laughs) made every mistake in the book and that's kind of why I now want to help others hopefully not make those mistakes. Um, Obviously things worked out in the end, but, you know, we chatted on the dating app for way too long. Then we texted for way too long and probably didn't meet up for a couple months. I remember I even made a joke. Wow. He asked me out and I said, oh, maybe next year. Cause it was like, you know, December of 2016 <laughs> or something. So we finally ended up going on a first date, uh, like January of 2018. And this was after, you know, a couple months of chatting and, you know, I met him and it was not this swept off my feet. Oh my God. I found my Prince charming. It definitely wasn't. Um, but I just knew that this guy was really cool and he had it together and he was as attractive in person as he was in his picture pictures. And, you know, it was just easy. We, um, you know, met for a drink and then we ended up staying at the bar and playing trivia. Um, but you know, I think we all romanticize this. Oh, when you meet your person, you'll know right away. Um, I had no idea. I still had no idea, even a year and a half into the relationship. Um, and to be quite honest, my intention was not to meet my husband. When I went on that date, it was just to go and have fun and meet someone new. So, uh, you know, which like, is actually like, like the best attitude for lasting love. <laughs> or right. love. Yeah. When you put so that you pressure just... of like, oh my God, I'm going on the state to meet my person or meet my husband or my wife or my forever, the one, uh, they're probably not going to live up to your expectations. Right. Yeah. But that's not, yeah. Show up to, <laughs> you show up to a date in like a wedding dress. Um, right. I'm ready. <laughs> Uh, wow. Okay. So you said a year and a half, really? I mean, come on, you, you dated for a year and a half and you still weren't totally, was it a year and a half and like a day and you're like, all right, I now, now, (laughs) you know, it's funny because, you know, people talk about this all the time, how like men know so much more quickly than women. Um, and you know, honestly, I wasn't like getting married. Wasn't really like on my radar. Um, I remember, you know, he would say, oh, we should move in together. And I was like, no, I'm I'm having fun, you know, living with my single girlfriends, you know, obviously eventually, you know, when the timing was right, we did that, you know, we got engaged, we got married, you know, but I just, you know, all of this to say that, you know, everyone really follows their own path. You know, I think there's so much pressure of, you know, you see this person, you know, meeting someone. And then three months later, they get engaged. And then three months later, they get married. Um, you know, we were engaged for two years and, you know, it was awesome. I got to call my fiance for two years. So, you know, with all this, it's hard not to compare yourself to others, you know, whether you're in a relationship or single or married, you know, and just compare your relationship. Um, but you know, it's important to know that everyone really is on their own path with, which I'm sure you talk about a lot on this podcast. (laughs) 
What are, what are some top, okay. So let's start with just guys first. What are your top, like, Hey dudes, don't do this. Don't do this stuff. For dating. I mean, okay. I know we some out, like don't assault your date. Okay. Like, okay we, let's right, not yes. that basic. But you know what I mean? Give us some tips. Like, you know, I, I feel like I could probably write a book filled with these, like, you know, cause you, when you're on the other side of it. Right. And then we'll go to the women and say, Hey, so what are the top tips? And maybe there's uh, similarities between both, but you know what I'm saying? Like, Hey guys, yeah. don't do this or do more of that, but let's start with the don'ts. Yeah. I mean, there's definitely similarities between both men and women, but there are some differences too. Um, you know, for men, I would say the number one thing. So we're starting with the don'ts. Okay. So don't definitely don't talk about an ex that probably goes for both people. Um, and for men too, is don't talk the whole time. I think sometimes many men, not all men, um, you know, kind of want to share a lot of things on the date and talk and maybe not ask as many questions or listen. Um, so I would say the number one do is really listen, 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 um, which I work with with a lot of men. (laughs) Yes. I've, I've left dates where I'm like, they have, didn't ask me one question, not one. Isn't that crazy? I'm like, oh, <laughs> yeah, neat. I don't get it. <laughs> and it's just, it's just almost like, how I don't get offended. It's just one of those like, oh, okay, this is funny. And then I'm just I'm like, that's hilarious. I have no idea who I am because I have dust. And then they're like, oh my God, I'd love to see you again. I'm like, that's hysterical. You didn't ask me one question. <laughs> oh, yeah. so funny. It's yeah. so strange. So um, I'm actually hosting a workshop in a couple of weeks, all about active listening and, you know, helping men work through that together with no women around. So hopefully awesome. it'll be good for them. <laughs> all right. So what are some other downs? Um, so some, oh, for, so for women, um, I would say number one don't is, you know, have your expectations way too high. Um, I see this all the time. And then probably number two would be, um, you know, nitpicking people and ruling someone out for something that maybe is beyond their control or that you haven't really fully explored yet. Um, I always joke that on first dates, men are looking for a green light and women are looking for a red light where, you know, women are looking for everything that's wrong and that could potentially go wrong. And men are just looking like, Ooh, like, can I just hang out with her more and maybe potentially sleep with her down the line? Yeah. Um, so, you know, I think that is one of the biggest pitfalls for women is just having this, you know, maybe long, long list of things they're looking for and, you know, having the unrealistic expectations that someone's going to meet every single thing. Okay. What are some definitely do this or people need to step up and start doing it as far as men or women? Ooh. Um, so I think for both, Um, do set intentions before your dates. I always tell all of my clients to do this. And I know, you know, we kind of talked about, I didn't go into the date intending to meet my husband. Um, so I would hope that people listening wouldn't either. Um, so set a simple intention, like to laugh, to try a new restaurant, to meet someone new, to find out about someone else's passion. Um, you know, something that you can easily say, check. I did that. Um, So that's a big do. And, you know, another thing I'll say too, is set your boundaries before you start entering the dating world. So we had, I'd kind of touched on this a little bit earlier, but know, you know, what you're looking for, you know, what are you okay with on a first date? Are you okay with, you know, physical touch? Are you okay with kissing? Are you okay with meeting, you know, outside, inside, at a bar, at a coffee shop? You know, are you okay with going to someone's house on date three? So make sure you have all those boundaries kind of set in your mind. So that way, when you come to that, you can have an answer and, you know, answer it confidently as which I'm sure Elle would advise too. <laughs> well, I think we both would say, uh, definitely have some boundaries. Like don't get yourself murdered out there. Like, like don't be right. yeah, I mean, yeah, you know. just like basic safety stuff too. Like, please don't go to someone's house on a first date, meet in a public place, you know, hopefully have a phone call with them before you meet them in person. I would say that would be always, I mean, I don't even understand why someone wouldn't get a sense. Like there's someone whose profiles, I mean, I, I, again, over the years, you know, spoken with people and you talk to them and like talk to some people that were like clearly kind of disturbed or something for a minute, but like, it wasn't reflected in their profile and you jump to a phone call and then you're like, Oh my God, thank God. I didn't like drive and like go meet this person in person. Like, Oh my God, you know what I mean? So I think like, it's a good way to just extra have a quick vet. Like if there's something that doesn't feel right. And then also what people say about themselves, you get a sense enough to go. I would just say this. I've, I've had wonderful relationships or have met people who 
weren't necessarily like the best phone person, right? They may have not been like hilarious on the phone or great at that moment. And like in the first phone call, but you can still get a sense. There was a vibe of like, you know what? This is like someone I still want to go meet. You can still get a, get that like vibe. I think it's worth it, especially if you're hesitant and if you're not, yeah, go out there, but you might be wasting a lot of time that could be avoided by a phone call. Right. And if you kind of do have that indifferent feeling, I always say, you know, go on the second date because you never know, um, or meet up with them in person. If you're kind of like, eh, I don't know, you know, because they're, you might not know a hundred percent on the first date. This is, person is still technically a stranger. Just reminder for everyone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Everyone's still a stranger. We don't know where we, everyone's seen the Tinder swindler. Hey, take a look at that. <laughs> oh God. Yeah. Are you dying over that? And then also how do you feel about like the love is blind shows and like these, like, I just, I'm just laughing through some of these shows, but some of them really do display an inherent difference. You talked earlier about values and I was watching one of those shows and it was clear that the major deal breaker for one of the women was that she literally wanted to be led in faith by a man. She had a, just absolutely could not date an atheist Mm -hmm. or an agnostic person. It became, that's a huge value. Uh, yeah, that's it. Yeah. Let's talk about like, that's, that's a major thing aside from just wanting kids or not. And so that was very reflective of that, you know, and, and people trying to settle for something less and you could tell she just, it was too important. Yeah. It's like, you have to know what those big non-negotiable items are. And if you are like, you know, very involved in your faith and that's really important to you, that's likely a non-negotiable, you know, the biggest things that I see, are, you know, related to religion, you know, maybe values in terms of politics, kids, marriage, obviously kind of the relationship, if it's with one person or multiple people. Um, So yeah, I do, you know, I kind of have an issue with some of the dating shows because they only reinforce all of the toxic and unhealthy things in relationships. Every reality show, no matter what is a disaster. Yeah. (laughs) But I mean, that's just the, like, that's also the good of reality shows because conflict makes it entertaining. So, um, you know, it's kind of a double-edged sword that, you know, we see all of these, you know, romance stories and we watch rom-coms and we watch the bachelor and then you think, oh, is this going to happen in my own life? And um, it's it's not. <laughs> yeah, unless you really want to be on one of those reality shows, which right. then, then good luck with that. Yeah, um, I have um, my husband's brother, um, one of our family members. Um, put in an application for him to be on The Bachelor. And I was oh just like, oh my God, why did you guys do this to the poor guy? Um, you know, he's not I actually live, I live someone. Like, I live like right down the street. I just, I found this out not too long ago during the pandemic. Someone was like, oh, you know, that's The Bachelorette house or one of the, I don't know if it's The Bachelor house. I think it's The Bachelorette house or I don't watch either of those shows, but yeah. it's like right down the street. And I was like, oh that I just thought it might've been a celebrity or something living there. Cause I live in that area, but it, it, I, and then I was like, Oh, that makes sense that there was like a security guy out there sometimes with the gate open and, you know, like a whole thing. It seemed like something was happening over there. Um, but yeah, oh so, God. so that, that, that stuff is happening right down the street. From me. Whoa. So you gotta be like our inside woman and give a, you know, give all the spoilers. Maybe I should just, you know, like lob a couple eggs over the lawn and disrupt one of the episodes. <laughs> no, oh my God. Hey, we'll know it was you when we see that. <laughs> Go back to some 13 year old vandalism. Right. Egg, egg bomb the bachelor house. Uh, no, it's actually a beautiful, beautiful property. I'm so sure. So tell us some of the other things that you feel like we need to know in this world. Actually, you know what? Let's talk about, you do some unique ways of working with people. Tell us about your website, even though we'll put the you know, link in the show notes, but tell us how you work with people, all the various ways and your team and what you guys do. Yeah. So we work with people, you know, in a couple ways. So one is, you know, working with us one-on-one, we are, you know, searching for you. We're setting you up on dates in a six month period. You know, we're also doing everything to help you feel super confident. That might mean uh, working with a dating coach. That might mean working with the stylist who picks out the best first date outfits. That might mean going to the barber. It might mean working with the astrologist, like the list goes on and on. 
Um, you know, we have anyone and everyone kind of as a part of our team and community so that everyone can feel awesome. So, you know, that is totally personalized to each individual person. Um, and really, you know, the goal is let's connect you with a whole bunch of people and hopefully one or two you are interested in and maybe more, but you really only need one. Um, and then you can go forth and conquer without us. Um, you know, I also help people with their online profiles. So, you know, if matchmaking isn't your thing, we do a whole photo shoot and rewrite everything. And I give you all kinds of tools to approach that in a more mindful way and set you up for success. Cause you know, matchmaking isn't for everybody, although I think it should be. And uh, the other option is entering our database or our pool of singles, um, which we do have a paid database, which is a little different than other matchmakers, just because we host a ton of events locally in Denver and the Denver metro area. Um, and then you get to come to a lot of those for free and meet and mingle. I love it. Do you only work with people in Colorado? Yep. Only people in Colorado. Um, but you know, if you're listening to this and you are curious about matchmaking, um, I would definitely encourage you, you know, do a Google search in your area, but you can also still reach out to me. We have a group called the matchmakers Alliance where everyone is vetted, owns their own business, you know, follows certain values. Um, and I can refer you to someone in that group in your area. So I would be happy to send you to someone that I like, maybe even one of my matchmaker friends. But even if that's not a thing, let's talk about the podcast, because that's really also something everyone can benefit from no matter where you are. So tell us about exactly. what you have there. I mean, I was on there talking about confidence and dating. No one's shocked about that. Who's listening. Um, but tell us about your podcast. And obviously it's everywhere. It's called ghosted, right? Or just give me the full title. Cause there might yeah. be some more. Uh, the ghosted podcast. Um, if you search it, the ghosted podcast by Abby Rosenblum or just the ghosted podcast, you will find it. Um, you know, it's all about providing resources to single people. You know, you've got to go listen to Elle's episode on confidence. It was amazing. And, you know, we talk about everything from confidence to navigating polyamorous relationships to, you know, the masculine versus feminine self-love you name it. So anything and everything is on there. And, um, my, uh, good friend, Dr. Brittany Wolford starts off every episode for us with, the uh, ask a therapist session. So you get to have a little info from her as well. And you can listen to that anywhere you can find a podcast and you can also follow it on Instagram, the ghosted podcast. Let's talk. You know what I, I let you brought it up. Let's get in there. This whole E emotionally non-monogamous, uh, polyamorous, all of the different thoughts. What have you seen? Yeah. What have you noticed? What you <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, it's, I think, you know, poly, polyamory, open relationships, ethical non-monogamy, whatever you kind of want to, what title you want to give it, you know, is becoming more mainstream, or it's at least more, you know, talked about, which a, I think is really good. You know, people who want that, you know, there's a place for them in dating apps if they are searching for that. Um, but the biggest thing is communication. Um, you know, if you're going to attempt one of those relationships, you know, you definitely need to be able to communicate really well with each partner, any person involved and, you know, always check in with people and make sure, are you okay with this? Because you may be constantly trying new things. Um, so that is really key with those kinds of relationships. And, you know, I know a lot of people are like, you know, they get in a relationship and like, Oh, well, maybe I'd want to try an open relationship, you know, would highly suggest, uh, discussing that, you know, before you get married or into something really serious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's, that would be something very clear to know. Um, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I won't get into the whole premise of this, but when I was writing sketch comedy years ago, I wrote a sketch that was based on a misunderstanding a friend and I had that we related to like a couple about like one misunderstanding the other person about having a, you know, um, like a, like an orgy. It was just a misunderstanding in words. And they're like, no, no, I didn't mean it that way. And it was like a whole thing where she shows up and he's like, everyone's at the house, like it's a bunch of people. <laughs> and she's like, when did you get the idea that I wanted group sex? He's like, well, the other week when you said you want, no, I didn't mean that. It was like the whole thing. And it's like all about just a really brief miscommunication. And then of course it was just campy and funny. Right. Yeah, people are walking by going, Hey, is this thing getting started? Facebook said it was 5 PM. It's like, you put it on Facebook. <laughs> like, so, you know, the whole thing was obviously high, ridiculous comedy, but it's, it's not a joke. And I always say it's 
open until it's spoken in general, right? Like be clear, like, don't be upset. If you find out someone like, did you have the conversation? Mm -hmm. Right. You know, uh, be clear to set yourself up for disappointment. You can't blame someone, especially in these early dating phases of, you know, if things aren't spoken and maybe you've seen someone for a couple of months, you can't, right. It's open till it's spoken, get clear. Right. And, you know, kind of the whole, you know, other end of this of talking about exclusivity in a monogamous relationship, you know, like you were saying, you're not exclusive until you talk about it. So, you know, if you are, I know it's kind of hard to have those conversations sometimes to bring that up. Um, you know, I always say it's best to start with being vulnerable yourself. And even though that's the hardest thing and say, you know, Hey, I really like you. And, you know, I have deleted all my dating apps or, you know, something like that to kind of open the conversation. You know, if you do want to just see that one person. Yeah. I love it. Check out, check out this ghosted podcast, because that's just sort of your continual free resource to get comfortable. And also too, if you want to work with Abby at some point as well, you're going to get really familiar with her and uh, how she thinks about things on the show. Exactly. And I have another great episode. If you didn't get enough about what to ask your matchmaker, um, you can check that one out too. If you are interviewing matchmakers and trying to figure out who's best for you um, and want to go even deeper into questions, um, there's a whole episode about that as well. I love that. You know what? Would you mind? uh, I'll put that link in the show notes to that episode as well. Um, So, and we'll link to your podcast in general. Thank you so much for joining us. Anything you'd like to leave us with? Ooh, um, you know, I'd love to leave everyone with a little bit of hope that, you know, if you're single and looking, you only need to find one person. So, you know, rejection will be part of it unless you want a hundred partners because it's not going to work out with everybody. Um, so, you know, have your boundaries, communicate, know your values and, you know, you'll find that one person or more if you want that. (laughs) Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Or more. Thank you so much. (laughs) And for everyone else, we'll see you next time. Thank you. Hey listeners, you know, over the years, a ton of companies have approached me to collaborate, but I will only promote companies whose products I believe in and that I actually use and consume on a regular basis. So let me tell you about some of my favorite companies that I can offer you discounts for. Rep Provisions, an amazing company doing incredible things for our planet, topsoil, and animals with regenerative agriculture. And it's my number one source for quality pasture-raised meat and chicken. Visit repprovisions.com and use code L15 for 15% off. I'm also obsessed with a company called Carnivore Crisps. They make a lean, all-natural, and delicious alternative to conventional snacking made with just real meat and real salt totally addictive and my favorite ones are the beef brisket and the ribeye visit carnivorecrisps.com and use code paleo10 for 10 percent off i also love and regularly use paleo valley products they make amazing supplements and delicious paleo products i use the superfood greens powder grass-fed beef sticks the organ complex and their bone broth bars i love the lemon and apple i also use their essential c complex and more Visit paleovalley.com forward slash promos forward slash L Russ for 15% off. I also love Primal Kitchen. They make delicious paleo approved, gluten free, grain free, soy free, and no refined sugar products. And I use them daily from their collagen powders and sauces and marinades to their avocado and olive oil. So good, so healthy. Visit primalkitchen.com and use code L10 for 10% off. I also love paleo powder and use it almost on everything I cook. They make incredible seasoning blends and they also have these incredible grain-free coatings that feel just like crispy breadings that you would have had prior to knowing that there's another way. So visit paleopowder.com and use code L15 for 15% off. 